This is the dance that I do every time I get a killing blow in a battleground. Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of Tovwow TV. For those of you who don't know, my name is Tyler. Today we're going to talk about a couple different things. First of all, the um, rated battleground achievements. It seems to me that if you win 75, 150, or 300 rate rated battlegrounds, you will get the new epic wolf mount if you're horde, or epic uh, war steed if you're alliance. These mounts are pretty sweet. Um, I think that they look really cool. They're a great addition to the game. Uh, it's a lot of kills though, or excuse me, a lot of uh, battleground wins. I'm looking at the achievement page right now and it only displays for 75 and 300 wins being the achievements, but on MMO Champion a couple weeks ago they released that there was going to be one for 150 wins, so I'm assuming that those are the three different breakdowns and that there's three different mounts. The thing that Blizzard announced was that uh, there's going to be, that each mount is going to be a count bound, so as soon as you, like, let's say you win 75 rated battlegrounds and you get the mount, then you can transfer it to any of your other characters. You only get one, so once it's learned, it's learned. It's kind of like the recruit a friend mount. But uh, I think that's really cool. It's definitely something for PvP players to get into, and it's uh, something that isn't based on PvE, which is what we don't see very often. Now, I know that I told you guys about the fact that I'm playing a level 52 rogue, but I've actually taken a break from that because I decided to switch to my level 85 death knight for PvP. Now, I don't intend to PvE this expansion anymore. Um, that could change, but right now, it's just not the route that I'm taking. But PvP has been a lot of fun. Now, Blizzard did offer us this week span between Season 9 and Season 10. What I'm noticing this is allowing players to do is because all of the Season 9 gear is available for purchase by Honor, there's an entire week-long period between the two seasons in which players can just farm Honor but get epics. And this is going to set us up to, you know, have the... Pretty much everybody's going to have about the same amount of gear when Season 10 starts. I kind of like this idea. I kind of don't. Um, my guild and I definitely stand to benefit from this. But I kind of feel like it's going to make the start of Season 10 so much more frustrating because you're not going to get those undergeared players that you usually would be able to use to push your rating up. So, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about that in the comment down below. But, uh, 10 starts, definitely excited for that. The new Baird and Hold boss is coming out. He's going to be... Uh, seems like he's going to be pretty hard. He's got a few different abilities that are pretty tough to deal with. His first ability is Focused Fire. Akuthar sets his gaze on the location of a random player, then inflicts 34,125 to 35,875 fire damage every one second to players within 12 yards of the targeted location. Searing Shadows, which is a tank alert, Akuthar inflicts 102,375 to 107,625 shadow damage to players in a 60 degree cone in front of him and increases shadow damage taken by 100% for 30 seconds. This is essentially going to be the frontal cone that we see in uh, the Valiona Theralion fight. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to be too much of an issue to deal with. But the Eyes of Akuthar are definitely going to be the big issue to deal with here. If you have done Barret and Hold this week, You've noticed that the trash has changed. We no longer have to fight the uh, monolith guys, but we've had to fight these Eyes of Akuthar. Now those are going to, it seems to me, based on these uh, abilities, that those eyes are going to be what we have to deal with in the fight. And as we know, if you've done Barret and Hold so far, they're pretty, they're pretty annoying to deal with. They'll definitely kill you. Uh, Akuthar forms an eye of Akuthar on every player for 10 seconds. The eye bores into their target host with the gaze of Akuthar. Now the gaze of Akuthar. The eye of Akuthar gazes at its target host, inflicting 5,850 to 6,150 shadow damage every one second for 10 seconds. And then there's Akuthar's destruction. After an eye of Akuthar remains attached to a player for 10 seconds, it fully bores into the host and detonates with Akuthar's destruction, inflicting 24,375 to 25,625 shadow damage on all players. 
Now, this is going to mean that if you don't kill the eye within 10 seconds, then it's going to inflict, inflict that major amount of damage to your players. This is going to cause raid wipes, I'm sure it will. Uh, so I have a feeling that what that's going to entail is we're going to have to DPS down all of the eyes before they start dealing massive raid damage. This is going to be kind of a tough function, but I think that ad control and some really good, well-placed AoE is going to have a big effect here. You're probably definitely going to want to have a Frost Mage that can root all of the eyes in place, so that way they're easier to target and easier to kill. But uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty cool boss. And I'm glad to see that the Barret and Hold VOA type bosses are getting these, you know, more intense um, functions and mechanics, because as we all know, the last Barret and Hold boss, Argoloth, really isn't that hard. It's 66 and 33%. Sure, you have to dodge some fire, and your tanks have to know where their taunt button is on their bars. That's pretty much all that fight entails. But this one definitely seems a little more complicated, and it definitely is going to take a, a you know a little bit longer to get used to. I think pugs are going to have a much harder time with this boss than they did with the previous boss. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, what's the deal with Blizzard and orphans? I understand that if you know, you're in a war, because obviously we're in the world of Warcraft, not the world of Peacecraft. But if you're in a war, say between, you know, the Alliance and Horde, as we are in WoW, uh, there's going to be orphans, you know, parents are going to die. People go off to war and, you know, they get killed, and that causes a lot of orphan children. But what I don't understand is what the focus is on, on orphans, like with Children's Week, we have to help orphans and, like, take them around. It's just, it seems, like, sure, it's a lot of fun and we get cool pets out of it, but it's kind of bleak if you think about it. Like, you're th think about it, you know, in an actual standpoint, if you were your character, you're a hero that everybody looks up to, and you're probably this little orphan child's, you know, somebody he looks up to. So you take him and you... you, you you take them through these quests, and you look at a few different things, and the orphan child's very happy, but when you take them back to the orphanage, I mean, you gotta think about what happens after that. Well, that child now never gets to see you again. And, I don't know, with the with the new balloon pet, you have to go uh, to an orphaned child and, and find that, and apparently the um, World of Warcraft headset, headset, the official one from SteelSeries, has a voice changer on it, and one of the options is orphan, and it's just like, I don't get it, you know? There's this, like, weird focus on orphan children in World of Warcraft, and it just, it almost makes me sad. Like, we all look at it, and it's funny, and it's fun, and Children's Week is cool, but, like, what's with the focus on orphaned children? It's just, uh, it's a very, it's a very bleak version of entertainment. Uh, it's just something that I thought about. And one last thing, so with Firelands, uh, I thought that it was interesting to unlock the, uh, the daily quest, or at least it seems this way to me. I haven't been able to figure out if this is true or not, but for me, uh, from what I understand, you need to complete all of the original Hijaw quests up to a certain point to be able to unlock the um, Firelands daily quest area, and I'm assuming the raid itself. Well, uh, to me, that's just ridiculous. Now, this might not be true. I have not been able to confirm nor deny this yet. But for me, I was unable to start the um, quest for doing the dailies to get into Firelands because I wasn't far enough into Hyjal, because I skipped Hyjal on my death knight. I mean, I was a tank, so I literally just... I did dungeons all the way to 85 on that particular character. Now, I've done Hyjal on other characters, sure, but it takes a while. And frankly... I don't want a PvE, but I thought maybe it'd be fun to, like, pug a run, or at least go check out the raid and see what it looks like, but I don't think I can do that. I don't know how to get there, I don't know, it just seems like Blizzard made this so much more complicated than I expected it to be when the patch was released. I thought that I would be able to go and, sure, start the daily quest up, but that Firelands would be kind of its own deal. And and maybe it is, maybe I've, I've literally been there and not even realized it, but... I just thought that that was really annoying that you would have to have a pre prerequisite with questing, especially with a level 80 to 81 area. Area. I mean, what's the point? Why, why make it that complicated? I figured that I'd just be able to go to an area and there'd be somebody with this starter quest and I'd just pick it up and 
be on my way, but apparently that's not the case, and that's really frustrating to me. I think that's stupid. And uh, apparently the regular bosses for uh, Firelands have already gone down uh, within... I don't know if it was four or six hours after the patch was released, but Vodka got the world first kill on Ragnaros. And something that I just read today is that there's a, I think, Taiwanese guild? I don't know what TW stands for um, as far as the countries. I know EU is Europe, obviously US is US. Uh, I saw TW is where this guild's from. I'm assuming that's Taiwan. Uh, I can't really think of any other country or region that's TW. But a uh, Taiwanese guild, under that assumption, decided to, I don't know, you know, they still haven't confirmed whether or not this is going to be reverted, because it's kind of an exploit, but what they did was they cleared all the way up through Ragnaros, they killed Ragnaros, and then they all faction changed, which resets your raid ID, and so they were able to go into heroic mode, and uh, actually get the first kill on, the world first kill on the first heroic boss. I think that there's going to be a lot of controversy over this. It's something that I don't know if we've seen before. Uh, a website did mention that this has been done before, although I haven't seen it happen. I don't remember it happening. I don't know what boss it happened with. But uh, I think this is definitely an exploit. I, you guys tell me what you think in a comment down below. Let me know if you think that this is legitimate, if they should be able to keep their uh, first kill, or if that's just a total crap. You know, Because I don't think that players that have money to devote to a faction change should have any, you know, benefit over players who can't afford that. That's, first of all, a very ridiculous and extreme uh, attempt at cheating, almost, and uh, I just, I didn't get that. You know, I can understand that a guild might want to do that. Definitely when I was on an older, more less populated server than I am now, there was a guild that transferred from Malganus that was like third in the world at the time and came and just got all our all our realm first and that was very disappointing that's okay i can understand that if you want to get a realm first and you're going to transfer servers cool but to like get that one boss kill i i don't know and that was cheating you know it's not like when people come over to a different realm they're resetting anything but uh these guys faction changed and it reset their raid id and it allowed them to kill this boss and so i don't know i just think that that's uh kind of out of line and I'm really curious to see if Blizzard does anything about it. But uh, thanks for listening, guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Remember to hit that subscribe button because you guys really like WoW and so do I. Remember to hit that like button because puppies are cool. And I'll see you guys next time.